everyone this is Yakantna here in this video we are going to solve a differential equation from higher order linear differential equation so let's get going problem solve dq plus 1 into y equals to cos 2x minus 1 firstly let's find order and degree of the given differential equation identify the highest derivative here dq is the highest derivative so 3 will be our order and the highest power of the highest derivative is our degree degree is 1 or just write the given differential equation as d cube y plus 1 into y y equals to cos 2x minus 1. We know that d is a differential operator. Then d square will be d square by dx square. And d cube will be d cube by dx cube. Now we can write d cube y as d cube y by dx cube plus y equals to cos 2x minus 1. Here the highest derivative is d cube y by dx cube. So our order will be 3. And the highest power of the highest derivative is our degree. Degree is 1. Now coming to the problem. We are given a differential equation which is in operator form. Right? Given differential equation. d cube plus 1 into y equals to cos 2x minus 1, which is in operator form f of d into y equals to q, where f of d equals to d cube plus 1 and q equals to cos 2x minus 1. Now we need to find the general solution to the given equation which is given by y equals to yc plus yp. Here yc is a complementary function. We will get yc using the roots of the auxiliary equation of the homogeneous equation of the given non-homogeneous equation. Simply by taking RHS to 0, we will get f of d into y equals to 0 which is a homogeneous equation to the non-homogeneous equation. And we will find yp using 1 by f of d into q. Right? Now let's find complementary function using the auxiliary equation of f of t into y equals to 0. The auxiliary equation of f of d into y equals to 0 is f of m equals to 0 where f of m equals to m cube plus 1. Now our auxiliary equation becomes m cube plus 1 equals to 0. Now we can find roots using synthetic division method. Now just take the polynomial m cube plus 1 and see which m satisfies the polynomial. Okay, firstly let's try for 1. 1 cube plus 1 equals to 1 plus 1 is 2. So 1 does not satisfies the polynomial. Okay. Let's try for m equals to minus 1. You will get minus 1 whole cube minus 1 plus 1 which is equals to 0. So m equals to minus 1 satisfies the polynomial. Now place the equations of m's. m cube. Okay. Quotient of m power 0 is 1. Quotient of m cube is 1 and remaining are zeros. 1 plus 0, 1. Minus 1 into 1 is minus 1. 0 minus 1, minus 1. Minus 1 into minus 1, 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. Minus 1 into 1 is minus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Again, these three numbers gives another polynomial. See, from m equals to minus 1, we'll get m plus 1 equals to 0, right? m plus 1 is 1 factor. Now, write a polynomial from this. Three numbers. We will get m square minus m plus 1 equals to, okay, this is a polynomial, right? 
from these three numbers we'll get m square minus m plus 1. Now see which m satisfies this polynomial. Try for 1. 1 square minus 1 plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 gets cancelled and you'll get 1 which is non-zero. If you try for minus 1 you'll get minus 1 whole square minus of minus 1 plus 1 equals to 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3 non-zero. Likewise you won't get any m which satisfies this polynomial. So what we can do? We can just write m cube plus 1 as product of one factor into the other. Right? Then this equation can be written as product of m plus 1 into m square minus m plus 1 equals to 0. Now, equate each factor to 0. We know that from m plus 1 equals to 0, we'll get m equals to minus 1. And here, just compare it with quadratic equation. We'll get a equals to 1, b equals to minus 1, and c equals to 1. Now, use quadratic formula minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac by 2a. Then, we'll get m equals to minus b for b equals to minus 1. Plus or minus square root of b square minus 1 whole square minus 4 into a1 c1 by 2a which is equal to minus 1 into 1 sorry minus 1 into minus 1 is 1 plus or minus square root of minus 1 whole square is 1 minus 4 into 1 into 1 is 4 by 2 which is equal to 1 plus or minus square root of minus 3 by 2. We can write square root of minus 3 as square root of minus 1 into 3 by 2. Now split this square root of minus 1 into 3 as square root of minus 1 into square root of 3 by 2. We know that square root of minus 1 is i. Then we will get 1 plus or minus i root 3 by 2. Or you can just write it as 1 by 2 plus or minus i into root 3 by 2. Right? So our roots are m equals to from m plus 1 equals to 0 we will get minus 1 and from m squared minus m plus 1 equals to 0 we will get 1 by 2 plus or minus i into root 3 by 2. So you will get one real and distinct root and a pair of complex conjugate roots. We know that when we have a single root solution will be, I mean the complementary function will be 1 constant into e power 1 root into x and if we have a pair of complex conjugates, we know that a plus ib is a complex number then its conjugate is a minus ib. If a minus ib is a complex number then its conjugate will be a plus ib. So we call a plus r minus ib as a pair of complex conjugates, right? If we have a pair of complex conjugates, then we'll write y c as one constant, not constant, sorry, e power ax into one constant into cos bx plus the other constant into sine bx, right? Now let's write a complementary function. So therefore, m equals to minus 1, 1 by 2 plus or minus i root 3 by 2 are the roots of our auxiliary equation, okay, which are real and a pair of complex conjugate is nothing but one real root and 
a pair of complex conjugate roots. Right? Well, let's write complementary function. y c equals to let's write for minus 1 c1 e power minus 1 into x plus now power a pair of complex conjugates e power 1 by 2 into x into constant another constant to cos root 3 by 2 into x plus another constant to sign root 3 by 2 into x right then y c will be c1 e power minus x plus e power x by 2 into c2 cos x root 3 by 2 plus c3 sin x root 3 by 2. Now let's find particular integral. We know the particular integral is given by 1 back of d into q is equals to 1 back of d dq plus 1 into q cos 2x minus 1. So this is of 1 by f of d into something like cos ax plus b. Okay. So here we'll find d square by minus a square and just follow the rule of 1 by f of d into cos ax form. Okay. So let's find d square which is given by minus a square for a equals to 2 we will get minus 2 square equals to minus 4 now let's see what happens if we replace d square in the denominator firstly we can write the denominator as write d cube as d square into d plus 1 into cos 2x minus 1 okay now take the denominator d square into d plus 1 Replace d square by minus 4, then you'll get minus 4 into d plus 1, which is equal to minus 4d plus 1. The denominator is non zero. Right? If we get the denominator 0, we'll get something like this, which becomes undefined because 1 by 0 is undefined. Right? But in our case, we got non zero. So, we'll replace d square by minus 2 square equals to minus 4. Then yp becomes 1 by minus 4 into d plus 1 into cos 2x minus 1. Which is equals to 1 by minus 4d plus 1 into cos 2x minus 1. We can also write it as 1 minus 4d into cos 2x minus 1. See in the denominator of this fraction we are having 1 minus 4d. Right? To change this minus or replace this minus with plus we will get 1 plus 4d. So let's multiply and divide with 1 plus 4d to this fraction. We will multiply and divide 1 plus 4d to our fraction 1 by 1 minus 4d into cos 2 x minus 1. Right? So 1 into 1 plus 4d is 1 plus 4d by 1 minus 4d into 1 plus 4d is 1 plus 4d into 1 minus 4d. See the denominator is of a plus b into a minus b form. We can write it as a square minus b square, right? So the denominator becomes 1 square minus 4d whole square into cos 2x minus 1.
this becomes 1 plus 4d by 1 minus 4 square 16 into d square cos 2x minus 1. Again, d square appears in the denominator. The denominator must be non-zero. Okay. Take the denominator part. 1 minus 16 d square. And see what happens if we replace d square by minus 4. 1 minus into minus plus 64 64. 1 plus 64 is 65 which is non-zero. So we can replace d square here. d square by minus 4. Then this becomes 1 plus 4d by 1 minus 16 into minus 4 into cos 2x minus 1, right? Which is equals to 1 plus 4d by 1 minus into minus plus 16 plus 64 into cos 2x minus 1, which is equals to 1 plus 4d by 65 cos 2x minus 1. Again, you can write this as 1 by 65 into 1 plus 4d into cos 2x minus 1, which is equals to 1 by 65 into 1 into cos 2x minus 1 is cos 2x minus 1 plus 4d cos 2x minus 1. So here, d is a differential operator. So we need to write or find derivative of cos 2x minus 1. Equals to 1 by 65 into cos 2x minus 1 plus 4 into derivative of cos 2x minus 1 is minus 2 sine 2x minus 1. Then this becomes 1 by 65 into cos 2x minus 1 plus into minus minus 4 to the 8 sine 2x minus 1. Now let's write the general solution. The general solution is given by y equals to yc plus yp. Then our solution will be I C C1 equal minus x plus e power x by 2 into C2 cos x root 3 by 2 plus C3 sine x root 3 by 2 plus yp 1 by 65 into cos 2x minus 1 minus 8 sine 2x minus So we have seen a problem from higher order linear differential equations in this video. Hope you will understand. We will see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.